sing. Let's take our Bible tonight and go to John chapter 20. John chapter 20 tonight. Had a wonderful time this morning uh, in the Lord. We're looking for a good time tonight. I've already enjoyed the singing tonight. I really have. Enjoy the uh, fellowship of you tonight. But I want to look in John chapter 20 tonight. Uh, I'm going to, when you get there, I'll ask you to stand one more time uh, to your feet. Then you'll get to sit down for the rest of the service until uh, the altar call anyway. And uh, John chapter 20, I hope tonight will be a blessing to you tonight. And let's begin to read in verse 19. And the Bible says, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had... Boy, ain't that good. Don't you like that? They were assembled for fear, but yet Jesus said peace. Ain't that good when he whispers peace to you? And when he had said so, he showed unto him, unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto, the, unto him, uh, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. And then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. There it is again. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have, and believing you might have life through His name. You be seated tonight. Uh, in this passage of Scripture, we're looking at the time right after the, uh, the crucifixion and right after the resurrection. As a matter of fact, just uh, right in the prior verses is when the Lord had... Uh, appeared in that unto Mary. Or it's early in the morning, it was still dark. As a matter of fact, she did not know who the Lord was, but uh, when he made himself known unto her, uh, in verse 16, And Jesus saith unto her, Mary, and she turned herself and saith unto him, Ramoni, uh, which is to say, a Master. And uh, boy, what a sweet time it is in our life when uh, it seems like the Lord has uh, made himself scarce and he has... Uh, hid himself, as it were, from us. Uh, but then in the darkest part of our midnight, in the darkest part of our night, uh, he calls our name. Ain't that a wonderful thing to have happen tonight when he uh, speaks to us? But notice he was going to go back to his father. He told her right there, he said in verse 17, I believe he still had his priestly duties and that to do because he said, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go out of my brethren and say to them, I ascend unto my father and to your father, and to my God and your God. And, we've, and so Mary goes and, do, and does that. And so the Bible said, uh, in the same day at evening, uh, as we read, being the first day of the week, the doors were shut and they were assembled because of fear. And as I made mention as I was reading that, ain't it a wonderful time, uh, not only when the Lord shows up in our darkest part, uh, but in our most feared part of life. And if you don't think you're ever going to face fear, uh, uh, friend, you let one of your children get deathly sick. Uh, uh, you let your spouse get deathly sick. Uh, uh, and wonder what's about to happen. Uh, and you'll face some fear uh, uh, in your life. Now you may not want to admit that. Uh, and maybe it's just me tonight. Uh, uh, but I'm going to tell you, I have faced some fear in my life. Uh, and he's always been present uh, in those times of fear. 
He's always been present uh, and made himself known. And I thank God for that tonight. But he knows where his disciples are. And so we can talk a lot about the Lord's body right here that he has, that uh, he just appeared in there, and uh, there he was, and they got to see him. And the Bible says, and when they, he had so said, uh, then he showed unto them uh, his hands and his side. What was so special about his hands and his side? His hands had the imprints of where they nailed him to the cross that was in it and his side uh, where that Roman centurion had thrust that spear and, uh, and blood and water had come uh, rushing out instead of breaking his legs they uh, rammed that spear up in his side and so as we read on we read that Thomas was not there and Thomas makes a statement over here he said except I shall see his, the hands uh, in his hands the prints of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side I will not believe and I'll be honest with you tonight, a lot of people give Thomas a hard time and uh, some of it is rightly so, but Thomas just wanted to see what everybody else got to see. Because if you look back at that prior scripture, the Bible said, and when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then the Bible says this, then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. They got to see his hands. And they got to see his side, but Thomas didn't get to see that. But when the Lord showed up next week in the same time, he tells Thomas over here, he said, peace be unto you. I believe he went right to Thomas and he said, look, in verse 27, he said, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side. And here's the part, he said, be not faithless, but believing. He just didn't believe the story that the disciples had told him, had he? Here they all stand. They had all seen the Lord. Reckon they were all going to lie to him. Reckon they were all going to fabricate a story that the Lord had come by, and that he and he and it ain't it ain't like he said, "Boy, I hate that I missed him that he come by," and it ain't that he said, "Boy, I hope he comes by again and I, and I get to see him." He said, "Except I get to do these things, I'll not believe." And so when the Lord comes, he said, put your finger, Thomas, in my hand and take your hand and put it in my side. And he said, my Lord, my God. And here's what the Lord said to Thomas. Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet believe. And that's us tonight that have trusted the Lord. I've not seen him by the physical eye. I've not put my uh, finger in, in, his, uh, in his hand over there. And I've not put my hand uh, uh, up in his side. But yet I believe all that. And I've trusted in that for him to save me. And tonight I want to preach having a thought of what he told Thomas right here to put his finger in his hand and his hand in his side. And I want to preach tonight on the marks of Christ. I believe right now that in heaven, I'll show you this after a while, I believe right now he still, he still bears those marks in his body. He had been crucified at this time. He had risen from the dead. He had ascended back to the Father uh, uh, and he had come back to meet with his disciples uh, and he still had them in prints in his hand and in his side. He still had the mark. You know, a mark is something that is um, a visible line made by drawing uh, with one substance on to another, such as making a mark on a paper. It's a line or a groove or a depression made by stamping or cutting or chiseled. It's any note or sign of distinction, such as God set a mark upon Cain. It's any visible effect of force. Any apparent or intelligible effect, proof, such as having a mark of separation on them or that notice is taken, such as marking that person. Jesus had more than an impression in his hands and more than an impression in his side. Tonight, can I say quickly, number one, first of all, those marks was from His crucifixion. 
Ain't you glad Jesus was cru crucified tonight? Listen, tonight it all started back in uh, Mark chapter 15. Take your Bible and go there tonight. In Mark chapter 15, we find him coming to the hall called Praetorium. Uh, and the Bible tells us in Mark 15 and verse 15, the Bible said, And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole band. And they clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and put it about his head and began to salute him, a Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him on the head with the reed and did spit upon him and bowing their knees, worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. So here we find that the Bible just gives us a short one. I know I've taught on this and preached on this before, but it tells us just a little bit uh, uh, right here in verse 15. Uh, the Bible said that he released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him. Now if you know anything about Rome and scourging, if, if you understand how that works, I, I listen, that, uh, that, that Roman uh, soldier uh, took that little whip uh, uh, that maybe had two or three cords on it uh, uh, and interwoven into those leather cords a lot of times. I uh, uh, was rock and metal and I uh, had steel balls in it and some of them had hooks uh, out on the very end of it. And some say they tied them to the Roman whipping post. Some say that they made them uh, lean over to where it would stretch out even more. And then he began, that Roman soldier, began to beat on Jesus. He began to lash uh, and that on his back. Think about this for just a second, church. As, as, as you realize Jesus done nothing to deserve this. I mean, we sang page four tonight. What a lovely name. You know what makes his name so lovely tonight? That should have been me and you uh, on the Roman whipping post. That's what's so great about Jesus tonight. Uh, listen, as they beat on him and as, as, though, as that whip would uh, begin to beat and, and those steel balls would begin to bruise him uh, uh, and those rocks and metal uh, uh, and all those things would begin to cut him. And they began to Mark his body, didn't it? As they took that, and, and listen, they would say, as I read in history, that some men did not make it through the Roman scourging, but uh, that Roman soldier got real good at that, and he would about know when that person was about to die, and they would quit beating on that person. They talked about how that whip would not only beat on the back, but it would reach around it, and it would reach around and it would hook the skin on the front side and he would just pull back on that thing. No wonder Isaiah 52 talked about the Lord Jesus over there that his visage was marred more than any man. The Bible talked about right here that they took that crown of thorns and they put it on his head. And they even took that reed that they gave him to hail him king of the Jews. They took that reed from him and began to hit him in the head. And I believe it was to, to beat that crown down in his head. Now all that was for me and you. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm going to tell you tonight, the Bible talked about in 1 Peter chapter 2, he said, who his own selves by our own sin in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin might be made to righteousness, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we're healed. But after they beat on him and after they took that crown of thorns that they plaited and put on his head and they beat it down with a reed... Then they took him to Calvary. And it was at Calvary that made the marks that he showed his disciples. Because see, it was at Calvary that our sins got paid for. See, it wasn't at the Roman whipping post that they got paid for, even though that, that should have been us there. But it was at Calvary that he made the sacrifice. 
Can I tell you, when he came, according to Psalms 22 and verse 16, he said, For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierce my hands and my feet, I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. You know, when Jesus left heaven, he knew what he was coming to face. He knew what Psalms 22 said because he's the one that had it pinned down. He knew what Isaiah chapter 53 said. Take your Bible and... Go over there. Go to Isaiah chapter 53. Most of y'all should know this tonight. Uh, one of the greatest uh, prophecies in, in the Old Testament uh, Scripture that deals with the crucifixion of the Lord and the payment of our sin. The Bible said in verse 1, Who hath believed our report to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Ain't that wonderful tonight? Jesus done that. Yet we need to esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. It was our sin that put him there. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes were healed. Those marks that he bore in his body was for us. Think about that for just a second, church. Verse 6, All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. So God in uh, the able in, the, uh, in his ability uh, to impute uh, uh, sin, bless his man, uh, to whom God will not impute sin. Ain't that what David said? But God has the right uh, and the ability uh, to impute sin to whomever he chooses to. And at Calvary, he took my sin and imputed it to Jesus Christ. That means he put it on him. That thrills my heart. Because all a man, woman, or boy, or girl has to do is ask Jesus to save and believe and trust in Him and He'll do that. He was oppressed and He was afflicted, yet He opened not His mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shears is done, so He openeth not His mouth. He never one time, He never one time said anything to get out of it. He was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare His generation for he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. I love that part right there, verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. And the very next thing he said, yet I, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He didn't do anything to be where he was. We did. You remember what the... You, you remember what the, the two uh, thieves hanging on uh, each side of Jesus as they began to rail on him uh, uh, and, and said, you know, if, if, if you were the Christ, you could get us down from here. And one of them finally realized who he was. Uh, uh, and he said, look, uh, uh, he said, what we've done, we deserve to be here. But this man's done nothing amiss. He's done nothing wrong uh, uh, to be here. Even one of those figured that out, didn't they? Verse 11, he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. That's one of my most favorite verses in Isaiah 53. Because when God looked down from heaven and seen everything that Jesus suffered through and went through, God was satisfied. God, you know why God's satisfied with me tonight? Because of Jesus. That's why he's satisfied tonight. He's satisfied because of 
Jesus tonight. But when he came, he realized uh, what he was going to have to suffer through. He knew what Isaiah 53 said. He knew what Psalms 22 said. He knew, listen, Mark chapter 8, and he began to teach them, talking about his disciples, that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed uh, and after three days rise again. John chapter 3 and verse 14, he said, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. He knew what he was going to have to suffer through when he came. I don't think me and you really understand what Roman crucifixion was all about. They beat him till the meat was tore off his back. They had spit on him. They had hit his face uh, over and over and over again. Uh, 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 the book, I believe it's in the book of Psalms, uh, uh, talks about that they pulled his beard out. Uh, uh, they took him to Calvary after he carried his cross part of the way and fell under the load and Simon of Serenia uh, helped carry it up there and then they laid him down and nailed him to the cross. And so as he is there leaning back on that cross with his hands outstretched, his feet are crossed and they've nailed them uh, uh, and his blood is running everywhere. The Roman Catholic Church has it all wrong. I mean, they show you a little picture of a little drop of blood here and a little drop of blood there and a blonde-haired, blue-eyed Jesus. Uh, uh, listen, he was a mess, friend, at Calvary. Wanted nothing to do with him. And here they've got him hung up, open naked chain between the heaven and the earth. He can barely breathe. He's been beat to, I mean, within an inch of his life. And now they're going to crucify him and watch him. They're standing there and they're watching him die. And what they teach us about crucifixion is they would have to raise up to catch their breath and then they'd slump back down. Can you imagine how that old rugged cross felt on that old tore up back as he rubbed on that thing? And as they nailed him in and he hung there You know, the, the, the songwriter said it wasn't the nails that hung him out, but it was love, and I believe that. I believe the songwriter got it right. Them nails didn't hold him there. Can you imagine how, just, just physically, can you imagine how much the Lord suffered? Physically. But then to have the weight of sin of the whole world of all time imputed to him. It's hard to imagine, ain't it, tonight? The Bible said in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So those marks that was in his hands and in his feet and in his side and on his back and in his head. He bore for me and you. They thought they were going to kill Jesus. They thought they had were going to punish him because that he made himself equal with God and was God. And by the way, He is equal with God and is God. Amen. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. But notice when He come to identify Himself, He come to identify Himself with those marks that's in His hand and in His side. And that one that was in his side was made after he had died when after all that torture had took place for my sin and your sin, after all that had happened, uh, 
uh, that, that centurion took that spear and shoved up in his side, no doubt hit his heart, uh, and out came blood and water. I really believe today, church, that as I see right here, that those marks are still in his hands. And those marks were what identified him to his disciples. Those marks is what Thomas wanted to see. Those marks is what his disciples, after they had seen those that he showed them, the, the marks in his hands and in his side, then were they glad. They identified who the Lord was. Now I think when we get to heaven, we'll know who he is. But if there's any doubt, I believe there'll be marks in his hands and in his side. So let me ask you this question tonight. Or let me read you this and then I'm going to ask you a question. The Apostle Paul said in Galatians chapter 6, From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Paul said... Don't bother me no more. As he was talking to the church at Galatia over there, he said, look, I, I, I am who I am. I am what I say I am. And I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Take your Bible tonight and go to the book of 2 Corinthians. I thought about uh, the Apostle Paul, how he bore those marks. So we see that the Lord got his at crucifixion. And they're an identifier of who He is. But tonight, do we bear the marks of Christ? The Apostle Paul physically bore those marks. Look in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Look in verse 23. Or back up in verse 22. Is he is talking about some uh, that might think they have or might be somebody, if I could say it that way, or boasting. In verse 22, he said, Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. And labors more abundant. And stripes above measure. And prisons more frequent. And deaths often. You know how many times I've been close to death? Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one, 195 stripes. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once I was stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often in cold and nakedness besides those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily the care of all the churches that was within so Paul said I, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ I have been beat on I have been whipped I, I, I have been stoned I believe Paul uh, was, uh, was uh, 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 how can I say this without being ugly tonight I believe he was beaten pretty bad I believe he was a rough looking character you couldn't get beat as many times as he had not be a rough looking character man when I was five years old I, I let I, you know my daddy put a speedometer on my bicycle which was a bad idea for a little boy and that thing would do 25 mile an hour. You know all that little boy wanted to do was see 25 mile an hour on a bicycle. That's fast on a bicycle on a gravel, dirt, charred, uh, what tar chipped road. That's pretty fast. I seen it. And then after I seen 25 mile an hour, I seen that front wheel just doing this number. And the next thing I know, my chin is going down that gravel road. And right through there, if I let my whiskers grow, you can see that scar where I took eight stitches right there. They laid me up on that hospital table and shot me up in that day. That ER doctor sat in there and just picked rock out of my chin before he stitched me up. I remember that very well. I was acting a fool one day over at the job and, and ended up cutting my thumb 
I didn't have, it probably should have been stitched up, but I didn't have it stitched up. But you know, there's still a scar there that is a reminder. I've got scars all over me. Some of you are thinking about some scars that you got, but can you imagine everything that the Apostle Paul just told you? He had been stoned. He had had 195 stripes uh, put on him. He'd been beaten with rods. Uh, all them things, not to mention being out. Imagine how he was beaten, battered off that ship when he spent a day and a night in the deep out there. Imagine how he was beat like that. And you know, he done every bit of that for the cause of Christ. Everything that Paul did was for the cause of Christ. And he said, look, he said, he, he said, look, he said, from henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I am bearing my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. I cannot imagine uh, what the Apostle Paul looked like. I cannot imagine what Stephen looked like, the first martyr that was ever killed for the cause of Christ when they got done stoning him to death. James, if you remember, remember, uh, is it in Acts 12? Somewhere over in there. Remember, the Bible just gives us a little short story. It said, uh, talked about James was killed. That's all, about all it tells us. Remember, they put Peter in prison and was going to kill him the next day. You remember that story? And the angel come by and let Peter out of prison and all those things. But the Bible tells us James was killed. History tells us that Peter was crucified upside down and other of the disciples was either crucified, burned at the stake, beheaded, and all those things. Christians in third world countries today bear in their body the marks of the Lord Jesus. I have yet to have one mark in my body for the cause of Christ. I've not been beat on. I have not been stoned. I have not been shot at. Uh, I've never been threatened to tell somebody about the love of Christ. Well, let me ask you this tonight. I'm, I, I'm not, I, I know that all that shall live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. The Bible's right, and it's always right. But you remember, a mark is something that is not only a groove or a line, it's made by cutting or an incision. But it's something that you take notice of. So what marks of Christ do we have in us tonight? How can folk mark us for Christ? You know, they look at Christ and He could show them His hands and His side. But what do we show folk tonight? What, what, what do we show folk tonight? Now, I don't wear a suit and tie everywhere I go. And by the way, I remember what... Uh, uh, I remember what Brother Tuttle said one time. Used to be the only people that wore a suit was a preacher and a detective, you know. What we wear on the outside might identify us some, but it's what people see out of us that identifies us more. What marks us and makes us like Christ? Y'all understand what I'm talking about tonight? What do people see in us that they say, hey, they're a Christian. That, I mean, we, we don't, we're, we're not beat on. I've not got 195 stripes on the back of me. I've not been stoned. I've not been beat with rods. I've not spent time out in the deep like the Apostle Paul did. And I would say that the Apostle Paul had had enough, if you want to know the truth. And then people question who he is, question his salvation, question his authority in Christ. And you know, after a while, he just had enough. He said, don't bother me. He said, I bear in my body the marks of Christ. But what marks us as one of his tonight? How about our kindness? That. Was the Lord not kind? Was the Lord not kind to you to come and save you? 
find you, pick you out of the crowd wherever you might have been uh, and said, I want to save you if you'll trust me. Wasn't the Lord kind to you? Has the Lord not been kind to you since you got saved? Boy, we all ought have stood up and shouted there. He could have wiped us out, couldn't he? Could have wiped me out a long time ago. How kind are we? Loving are we? The fruits of the Spirit that I talked about this morning in Galatians 5 and 22 and 23, our love and our joy and our long suffering, does that, does that show up in us to mark us as a Christian? That somebody could say, there's something different about her. There's something different about him. Boy, I'd like to have what they got. I'd like to have something different. Do we help those that are in need? You know, the Lord helped those that were in need, didn't He? You know, the Lord was friendly with sinners. You know, He would sit down and eat with sinners, but He would not sin with sinners. And we, as independent Baptists, we mess that thing up so much sometimes. We mess that up. Uh, the independent fundamental Baptists where Miss Bethany's working at right now would see no use in being up there because they would want to try to clean them up before they saved them. But the only way you're going to clean anybody up is to save them. Let Jesus save them. You say you're awful hard on independent fundamental Baptists. That's what we are. I know how we think sometimes. I know what I've been around over the years. What about the mark of separation in our life? We're not part of the world. We're in the world, but we're not part of the world. We're not supposed to be part of the world. We're not to look like the world, smell like the world, dress like the world, act like the world. We're to be different. Would that not mark us? The marks of Christ. Was not Christ different when He came? The mark of desertion. Not everybody's going to want to hang around with you. When you start talking about the Lord, a lot of people are going to make their self scarce. They don't want to hear about it. The mark of sorrow. We don't like sorrow. I don't like sorrow. But you know what? You'll face sorrow as a Christian. You'll face it. But there's always one there. There ought to be marks in our life that, that proves, proves who we are. What was it that one of them told Peter over there as he was standing around that fire as they were uh, trying the Lord Jesus Christ as they got out there and, 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 and they said, you're one of his and he began to deny that. And, and they said, your speech bereath you, which means it betrayed him. He didn't talk like everybody else. Peter had cleaned his language up when he got around Christ. And when he got to know Jesus, he cleaned things up, if you'd let me say that, or Jesus cleaned them up for him. But the Bible said that when they said, but your speech bereath you, then the Bible said, and he began to curse and deny him again and say, I know not the man. What marks us? What marks of Christ do we bear in our body and in our self tonight? The Bible says in the book of the Revelation, chapter 1, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. When he comes, when he comes again, I believe they'll know him by the marks in him. Revelations 5 said, And behold, lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. John seen him as a lamb that had been slain. I want you to take your Bible and then I'm going to close tonight and go to Revelation 6. Revelation 6 is a synopsis of everything that's basically going to happen in the rest of the book, if I could say it that way.
Look in verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. What kind of reminds you of the book of Joel, don't it, just a little bit? And the stars of heaven fell under the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken uh, of a mighty wind. And the heaven, you know they're seeing things in the heaven now, ain't they? They're seeing UFOs. You believe in UFOs, preacher? I sure do. I didn't say I believe in little green men. I said I believe in UFOs, unidentified flying objects. And the stars of heaven fell under the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she's shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll, and is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in dens and in rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. And from the wrath of who? Of the Lamb. For the great day of His wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? John seen Him as a Lamb that had been slain. You know, a Lamb don't have much wrath, does it, in this world? But they said, hide us from the wrath of the Lamb. I believe they seen Him for who He was. I believe they knew who He was. I believe they really realized at this point in, in, in prophecy, uh, I believe that they really realized who Jesus is. But at that time, it's too late. Do you realize right now that if you're lost, it's not too late for you to get saved. You can get saved tonight. But what are we bearing in our body that marks us with Christ tonight? Let's bow our heads across the house.